By now, it should be pretty clear that Toronto continues to prioritize missing middle type of projects to create more affordable housing options in our city. Now, priority number one was multiplexes in all houses in Toronto, and next up are now rooming houses, which have already been approved and will be enforced in all residential zones in Toronto starting next spring. So, what exactly is changing and are they actually worth investing in? Well, keep watching and let's jump right in. First off, let's clarify what a rooming house is. By definition, there are two types, a dwelling room and a multi-tenant house, but both essentially mean that you are renting out a room that isn't self-contained and will follow rooming house rules. Now, a dwelling room means that you are renting a room that is inside a house that isn't self-contained but might have a private washroom or a kitchen, just not both. A multi-tenant house is a building with four or more rooms with shared bathrooms and a kitchen. Now, currently, rooming houses are only permitted in specific zones within Toronto and is very limited. But on March 31st of next year, 2024, a new set of rules will come into effect that will permit rooming houses in all residential zones in Toronto. Now, the number of rooms permitted in a house depends on the location and your zone. So from this map, you can take a look at it and see that the majority of Toronto will allow up to six rooms per house, with some areas closer to downtown permitting up to 12 rooms, and houses on main streets might allow as many as 25 rooms. Now, let's fast forward to March 31st of 2024 and see what might be required to create a rooming house. Now, first of all, you will need a license and there will be stricter building fire health and safety requirements too. And you can also expect annual inspections from the city to make sure you are in compliance of all of those rules. There will also be a separate multi-tenant housing tribunal that will enforce these rules with potentially higher fines as well. Parking is another thing to think about, and in general, it has been removed from most houses in Toronto, but there could be parking requirements for your rooming house. Now, this does depend on where your location is within the city, so you will have to contact the city for more details. Honestly, right now, things are still pretty high level at the moment, but I'll put a link down below for where you can get more details on the new framework from the city if you are interested. Now, let's weigh the pros and cons of rooming houses compared to multiplexes. Currently, multiplex rentals in Toronto offer the best rent yields probably in all of Ontario. And you've probably heard it from us before. The more units you divide a house into, the higher the rent yields. And because Toronto allows up to five units in a house, the rent yields end up outperforming the rest of Ontario, which typically only allows up to three units. But the difference here with rooming houses are that they are not self-contained and so they actually have a discount compared to multiplexes. So how do the numbers actually compare? Well, let's take a look at a house with six rooms, two on each floor. So if we were to make this into a multiplex, you would have three units, two bedrooms on each unit, and current market rents can give you around $2,800 for each of the top two units and around $2,200 for the basement unit. Now, if you make the same house into a rooming house, this means you would need $1,400 per room on the top two floors to break even and $1,100 per room in the basement to break even, and you're probably not going to get that today. And so just from the rent side, there's already minimal benefit to making a rooming house. Now, costs will also go up for rooming houses. Not many insurance companies will insure rooming houses and the few that do charge a lot more. And then we can also talk about management. Managing six separate leases is a lot more work. And if you don't wanna do this, it'll probably cost you a lot more for property management too. Another thing to think about is the mortgage side, which might be a problem for you if you have a rooming house too. Banks generally don't like rooming houses, so you might have to resort to alternate lenders, and that's going to bump up your borrowing costs there too. Now finally, let's also touch on values. When you convert a house into a multiplex, it is possible to see a bump in values based on cap rates. 
But there's generally a smaller pool of investors who would choose to invest in rooming houses. And you also end up getting lower cap rates compared to a multiplex as well. And so I would say that values are probably going to be lower compared to multiplex conversions. And so at the end of the day, it does seem like it is more work and money to create a rooming house, but there's probably less value add compared to a multiplex conversion. So this probably doesn't make sense either. The last thing to consider are rent controls, and I don't have a concrete answer here. However, it looks like the city's new framework does highlight the desire to maintain affordability for rooming houses. And so even though rent controls now only apply to units created before November of 2018, I actually won't be surprised to see stricter rent control rules for rooming houses since they are intended to be the most affordable housing option in Toronto. Now, as you can see, the bottom line from us is that this is definitely another real estate investing option for Toronto and does reinforce the better growth potential for Toronto freeholds as well. But if you are looking for fewer headaches and potentially better returns too, we recommend sticking to the multiplex conversions at this time. You're watching this probably because you want to really understand your real estate options before making better decisions. And if you need help weighing your Toronto real estate investment options with someone, you've reached the right team. We're a real estate sales brokerage that focuses on investing in freeholds in Toronto, and we're happy to chat. Just head over here to book a Zoom discovery call with us. Now, if you found this video helpful, show us your support by giving this video a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button to stay updated with our content. Our channel covers a wide range of real estate investing topics in Toronto from market trends to housing policies, interest rates, and investment strategies. We want to make your real estate investing journey easier for you, and so we offer services like planning, analysis, buying and selling, renovations, leasing, and property management. For more information, just head over to our website or find us on social media. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!